Welcome to Psychology of the Unknown. If you enjoy stories about true crime, creepypastas, urban legends, true ghost stories, and psychology, then you're in the right place. Because that's all we do here. So please make sure you click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. And if you like what you see here, then please hit the like button and let us know what you think in the comments below. Today's story is about Lizzie Borden, and the rhyme goes like this. Lizzie Borden was born on July 19, 1860 in Fall River, Massachusetts, and was accused of murdering her father and stepmother on August 4, 1892 at the age of 32 years old. Andrew Borden was the proprietor of a furniture and casket manufacturing company, as well as the president of Union Savings Bank, property developer, director of several textile mills, as well as the director of Durfee Safe Deposit and Trust Company, which meant that the Borden family held considerable wealth and influence. At the time of his death, the estate was valued at $300,000, which would be about $9 million by today's standards. Andrew was quite frugal in spite of his wealth, similar in many ways to Ebenezer Scrooge, so much so that he never had indoor plumbing installed in his family's home, though it was a sign of wealth at the time. The family attended Central Congregational Church, where Lizzie and her older sister Emma taught Sunday school, and served as the secretary treasurer for the Christian Endeavor Society. Lizzie and Emma's mother died in 1863 when Lizzie was only three years old. And three years later, Andrew married Abby Gray, who Lizzie only ever referred to as Mrs. Borden, and believed the latter had married her father for his wealth. In fact, Lizzie and Emma rarely even ate meals with their parents. The Bordens had a 25-year-old maid who had immigrated to the U.S. from Ireland by the name of Bridget Sullivan, who they called Maggie. In May of 1892, after Lizzie had built a roost for several pigeons in their family's barn, Andrew killed the pigeons with a hatchet, believing they were attracting local children. In July of 1892, the family were involved in an argument which led to the sisters taking an extended vacation in New Bedford. And upon their return, Lizzie chose to stay in the local rooming house for four days before returning home. The sisters grew more and more furious over the frequent gifts of real estate to various members of Abby's family. They then demanded and received a rental property from their father by which they paid a dollar for and then sold back to their father for $5,000 just a few weeks before the murders. In the days leading up to the murders, everyone in the house grew violently ill and Abby feared that they had been poisoned due to Andrew not being a very popular man. The Bordens received an overnight guest the night before the murder of Andrew and Abby. Their guest was John Morse, and the next day he left at 8.48 in the morning, with Andrew going for his morning walk sometime after 9 a.m. After the two left, Abby went upstairs to clean the guest room, even though it was one of Lizzie and Emma's regular chores. While cleaning, Abby witnessed her killer enter the room and was looking at them when she was struck on the side of the head with a hatchet. This caused a gash just above her ear and caused her to turn and fall to the floor face down. The fall inflicted a contusion on her nose and forehead. Once down, her attacker hit her 17 more times. The blows were directed to the back of her head. It was these blows which killed her. Andrew returned home around 10.30 that morning, but his key failed to open the door, at which time he knocked and Maggie Sullivan went and unlocked it. She later stated that she heard Lizzie upstairs laughing after this, though Lizzie denied being up there. Lizzie stated that a few moments later she removed Andrew's boots and helped him with his slippers before he laid down on the sofa for a nap. However, the crime scene photos showed that Andrew was still wearing his boots. She then told Maggie that the local department store was having a sale, by which she allowed her to go. However, Sullivan didn't feel well and went to lay down. At around 11.10 in the morning, Lizzie called for Maggie from downstairs, saying, Maggie, come quick, father's dead, somebody came in and killed him. 
According to investigators, Andrew was slumped on the couch in the downstairs sitting room, having been struck 10 or 11 times with a hatchet. One of his eyeballs was split in two. When questioned, Lizzie's responses to police were strange and contradictory. They found two hatchets, two axes, and a hatchet head with a freshly broken handle in the basement. Lizzie was eventually arrested and charged with the double murder. Five days before the trial began, Bertha Manchester was found hacked to death in her kitchen with an axe. The murderer turned out to be Portuguese immigrant Jose Carrera de Mello, who was convicted in 1894, but it was determined that he hadn't been anywhere near Fall River at the time of the Borden murders. Lizzie's trial took place in New Bedford on June 5, 1893, at which time the broken axe was presented as the murder weapon. Alice Russell testified that she witnessed Lizzie burn a dress in the kitchen stove on August 8, 1892. However, Lizzie stated that she ruined it when she brushed it against wet paint. The victim's heads were removed during the autopsy and admitted into evidence during the trial. When she saw them, she fainted. After about an hour and a half of deliberation, the jury acquitted Lizzie of the murders, and upon leaving the courthouse, she told reporters that she was the happiest woman in the world. Lizzie remained the prime suspect of the murders for the remainder of her life. After the trial, the sisters moved into a large modern house in a high-end neighborhood, which Lizzie named Maplecroft. Lizzie began using the name Lizbeth Borden around this time, and because Abby died before Andrew, the sisters inherited the entire estate. Had Andrew died first, the sisters would have received nothing as the estate would have gone to Abby's family. Lizzie became the subject of public ridicule after this as public opinion was that she had actually committed the murders. In 1905, Lizzie and Emma had an argument over a party Lizzie held for actress Nance O'Neill. Emma moved out and never saw her sister again. In 1927, Lizzie had surgery to remove her gallbladder and then grew ill. On June 1st of the same year, she died of pneumonia. Nine days later, Emma died from chronic nephritis at the age of 76 in a nursing home. Neither of the Borden sisters had ever married, and upon their deaths, they were buried side by side in the family plot at Oak Grove Cemetery. Lizzie was worth $250,000 at the time of her death. By today's standards, that would have been about $4,938,000. She left $30,000 to Fall River Animal Rescue League, $500 to trust for perpetual care of her father's grave, $6,000 to her closest friend, as well as a cousin, and several friends and family members each received between $1,000 and $5,000. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Give us a like, leave a comment below, and please share the video with your family and friends. I've been Shannon, and this has been Psychology of the Unknown.